Uh, my name is Jose Manuel Nieto, and I am the uh, uh, business development director for Thermoelectric, that meaning uh, biomass and CSP as well. I think we are at a near impasse uh, uh, situation because of the fact that m uh, most of the projects that were developed for the Spanish green tariff, they are either completed, uh, almost completed, or beginning construction. So even though this is good from the point of view, there is a lot of uh, activity going on in a big industry that has been created. There is some uncertainty in the future in the sense that the pipeline is not clear. It is true that there is a new renewable energy plan approved by the government, but we have yet to see the practical implementation. That, that is one thing, and, and, and what is happening because of that is that the, uh, there is a disconnection between the Spanish market and the industry that was developed so far and what is happening now in emerging countries like South Africa, Morocco, where those very same companies, that, that very same industry, is now comp competing on a different ground. And it has been very good in one sense because, you know, this industry would never exist without this Spanish green tariff. But on the other hand, it's a crossroads situation because we have to start competing in a totally different scenario, you know, and we have yet to see the outcome. So to me, it's like we are waiting for, do you know what, what comes out of, of those, you know, bits. I think uh, we all know the biggest threat is PV. Uh, not because we PV is worse or better, just because its capital expenditure is lower. And it promises cheap electricity from the start, or at least maybe not so cheap, but it promises a low investment, okay? So we are seeing a lot of projects in the US converted, migrating from CSP to PV. So you could say that is a threat. Another threat is the financial uh, turmoil that has effectively squeezed credit. So cap CSP is capital intensive by nature because we, we don't have this modular approach, but we are utility scale uh, solar. So we are suffering this lack of, uh, of, of willing to invest. If you look at the United States, the only projects that have been built are those that have a DOE uh, loan warranty. So that tells you almost everything. Other than that, the only actual CSP we're uh, seeing progress in the world is in South Africa, India, or Morocco, where there is a freedom tariff or similar, okay? Uh, even if, if it is a bit tariff, but some kind of tariff. Without some kind of warranty, mm, I think the, actu the current, you know, um, financial conditions make it very difficult. We have to put our focus on our advantages. Uh, one of them is very widely known, which is dispatchability, okay? But I'm beginning to, f to feel that is not enough because there is a lot of uh, idle uh, convention cycle capacity out there, which is able to, to cater, you know, for the peaks uh, where they are when they are needed in the system. So um, dispatchability is becoming a big uh, argument, uh, uh, not a, a big advantage, in especially in emerging countries, because uh, it provides a renewable technology that is able to dispatch, saving them from investments in alternative uh, dispatching capabilities and possibly replacing diesel, which is extremely expensive. But that is not enough. In my opinion, I think we should uh, try to become more modular. I think we, we should, uh, it's nice to be utility, but you can, I think we should try to be utility. At the same time, we are modular. So we reduce the um, time to build. So our activation costs go down. And also, so that we do not require such a big investment at a time. You know, if we do that, we will shorten our development cycle. From that meaning, the moment you develop a product to the time it's proven commercially, 
for CSP is now like five years. If we could manage to reduce that as an industry to two years, we w I am convinced, you know, we would see a dramatic decrease in, in cost. The countries, the regulators in every country, the grid operators have to look at this industry like an infrastructure. You know, the same way they, they look into airports, highways, railways, hospitals, because it, it very well matches the nature of what we do. So, and it, this is fun to say, but it, it, I think they should think about it not as, as a money issue, but as a, but as a national interest. Because where they're building is freedom from fossil fuels. And uh, you think most of the countries where this is done, they don't have fossil fuels. Morocco does not have uh, a, a big amount of fossil fuel. India maybe has coal, but they don't want to destroy their forest just to, use to, to produce electricity. Uh, and basically what you're building is your, your own oil well. In, in your country, even though you don't have it, you know? So you don't have to think financially about the payback period of a, of, of a plan. You have to think that CSP will last for 30 plus years. And for these years, after you write down the capital, you're going to get incredibly cheap energy, you know? And, and one that is dispatchable. And I think this is the idea that we should push, you know, we should convince governments not to look at the short term, but to look at the long term picture where there is really no competition for CSP. I think we, we are all excited about Morocco and South Africa. <laughs> I think we are, we are all willing to see, you know, what the final outcome is. And uh, we want to be a part of it, you know. And I think we have to learn lessons, you know, from emerging countries. I think we should all be looking very carefully at what they do because probably they have a, a, a blank piece of paper to draw on on, you know, as opposed to us. And it's a terrific opportunity to design a grid, a system, you know, that will be based on renewables. The same way some countries never had fixed telephone lines, but everybody's got a handphone, you know, a, a mobile telephone. I think it's funny, we, we're going I think that is the biggest challenge. There are countries that are going to lead almost 50% based on renewables. 